let's try a parallel life. This is um, there's a tutorial um, of this parallel life demo on on the Down to Research website, and so when I can see like let's do a little bit of initialization, and what this program right here, this this next expression that is a math in Mathematica language, uh, how to evaluate life, and the, the the classic common game of life, and so what I'm going to do is be able to set up an initial variable. That um, that the height and width of my space is 360 by 360, and so uh, this is just initializing with with random data, and so the green code I, I have it color coded here so that the green code is indicating what the uh, what it would be like to run as a single processor or just using one kernel, and so this is a problem that will actually take a little while. So what it's, what it's going to do is that it first sets up the periodic boundary conditions, and then it, it performs the execute life function to be able to, uh, to, be able to do the actual uh, game of life calculation. And then it's going to plot the array um, as, and, and for display here so that we can see, and then time all that to be able to uh, understand what, to be able to get an idea of how long it takes to be able to run one processor. So this is something that, that actually takes a little while. Well, maybe I'll get a drink. So it's still going. Oh, okay. The results are beginning to come in, and we can see that it took 58.8 seconds uh, to be able to perform this 360 by 360 array. And so, just to be able to show that it is indeed the game of life, we can we can like sort of zoom in on this. So we can see sort of some of the basic life patterns that are in there. Um, some of the, that that are forming in there. I mean, we could continue to evolve it, but you know, that's going to take another minute to be able to do that. So, what I'm going to do is, is I, here's the blue code that that this is starting with the that it's going to start with initialization. So, I've taken the I've initialized it instead of just life width by life height. That is 360 by 360. I take life width divided by eight in this case, the number of n proc, and basically do a slice instead, and so if I take that and, and, and compute that and produce the timing, if you notice inside this code that, that the only thing that's really different is this edge cell, is that it's, uh, an edge cell is providing the, uh, the means to be able to maintain these guard cells. And you can see actually the, the, the answer already came back. It's about 6.3 seconds just to be able to compute it. So, but if you notice that I only see the results that are being produced on this processor within this kernel. There are other results that are stored on the other one. So if you were to do this again and again, you want to do it this way because you don't need to be able to see the answer after every single time step. Let's say you want to find out what it is after 100 time steps. You do all the computations out there and, and let the data store out there. But if you finally wanted to, um, to be able to see it, you can do an MPI gather on the data that's there. And so I'm going to do the calculation again, uh, but do a gather as well so I can see all the different parts of the problem that were being that are being done um, on the other kernels of the cluster, and so I can see that there are eight different parts of the of the uh, life array uh, being produced on each one of the other kernels, and so if I zoom in on this, what I can see is that I, I've the way I've plotted it. Actually, let me make this a little bit bigger. The way I've plotted this is that I've plotted it so that I can see the partitions in in between each one of the um, in between each one of the problems. But one thing that I, I, I'd point out is if you notice that the, there's a pattern you can see um, along the, the edges of each one of the partitions is that you can see that um, there's a copy of two pixels wide from one partition to the next and that's being maintained by the edge cell. So that allows you to do the computation in one subroutine but the edge cell provides all the communication you need to be able to continue to do the problem in parallel and get your ultimate answer. So again, it's producing the game of life in parallel. We provide that on the website. Uh, that, uh, that there's a link to that from the uh, Pooch MPI toolkit uh, for Mathematica website. But uh, we also provide another example. This is a plasma code, um, a full electrostatic plasma code, but all within the Mathematica language. And I think this is the first time that that's ever been done. Um, and to give you an idea that this is the, the green code is the is a fairly substantial amount of uh, single processor code uh, to be able to just do the plasma, 
And so, in order, and so, rather than uh, run through the whole thing, um, you can you can download this as well from the website and try this out. Uh, what I'll show you is that this is the the kind of result that it looks like. Is that the uh, this shows a, a plasma beam within a, a a cold background. So there's a hot beam which is in the center there in the blue against a cold background which is drawn um, in the green in the background there. And um, in a previous one, we when we ran four time steps, it took uh, 37 seconds or so uh, to be able to do four time steps. But if we do this in parallel, well, if we can see that the blue code is the is the parallelized code, and some of the pieces that it comes down to is that there's an MP all reduced there. Um, there are just a few little pieces here and there, and, and element manager. That's actually one of the significant ones that manages where all these plasma particles from one partition to the next. And so, and then and then one of the one of the last uh, steps is to um, do MPA reduce on all the data um, out there to be able to put, put to put it together and draw it in one graphic so that we can see it. So that's the blue code, and we can see that from a previous one when we did four time steps, it took um, it took uh, ten seconds instead. And this was um, on a six processor case, going from thirty seven to, to to ten seconds. And so it's this is a problem that's much more difficult to parallelize, but it's something that is is possible to do in Mathematica. So um, so you can get substantially better performance using an increased number of processors that way. So uh, those examples will be available on the website, and uh, so you can have a look at that your, uh, yourself um, and try that out. Okay, so let me uh, go back to uh, the slides. So if you want to uh, find out more information to be able to contact us, uh, this is our contact information uh, for myself, as well as V. Tannenbaum, d.adderresearch.com, um, as well as via advancedclustersys.com. Uh, but we, you can link to that from the Dadder Research or the acs-grid.com website and, and, find out, and, and find out more information about the uh, toolkit for Mathematica and Pooch MPI. And if you want more information, we also provide a reference library is that there's the Mathematica website, uh, the Pooch MPI for Mathematica website, drresearch.com slash pooch slash mathematica, as well as the Advanced Cluster Systems website, acs-grid.com. Uh, so both websites will, will give you information about, math, about our, our new toolkit within Mathematica for high-performance computing. We also provide a lot of tutorials on writing parallel code, drresearch.com slash pooch slash tutorials.html. Uh, that provide you the, the plasma example I showed you, as well as the parallel life example, and a number of other tutorials on basic examples, both in Fortran and C, and then now uh, we can do the same in Mathematica. And also we provide uh, various videos, including how we sh we've done this kind of cluster on national television, uh, interviewed by Doug Llewellyn, as well as William Shatner. And then we have a number of other publications that we've done in computers and science and engineering, as well as in IEEE conferences. And, um, and, other, and other venues where we've presented this information before. So uh, from there, uh, I wanted to thank you uh, very much for uh, viewing this uh, presentation. And uh, I hope uh, that you'll have a chance to be able to try out the Pooch MPI Toolkit for Mathematica yourself and enable and harness the power of high-performance computing within the Mathematica environment uh, for, uh, for anything that you desire. So thank you very much for your attention. This is Dean Dowger. Goodbye.